welcome to the DevOps Library. This is Samantha with episode 11. We're glad you found yourself here. Today we're going to cover how to join a Linux server to Active Directory, Ubuntu specifically. Why are we devoting an entire video to what sounds like such a simple task? Well, for two reasons. One is that we've seen countless companies use Active Directory for all of their Windows servers, only to resort to using local accounts on their Linux servers. And secondly, once you look into joining a Linux server to Active Directory, you'll realize there are dozens of ways of doing so, but none of them are really intuitive. So we're going to start out with two servers, a Windows 2012 VM serving as a domain controller, DNS server, and file server, as well as a fresh 14.04 Ubuntu VM. The Ubuntu server must be able to resolve the domain controller, so make sure that you can ping the name of your domain successfully from the Ubuntu VM. Don't worry if the ping fails to resolve. All you need to do is add the Windows Server to the Ubuntu VM's list of name servers. To do so, run echo prepend domain name servers followed by the IP address of your Windows VM to etsy dhcp dhclient.conf followed by if down f0 and if up f0. Now go ahead and try to ping your domain name. It should resolve successfully now. Okay, so now you may be wondering why we didn't just add the name server to the interfaces file or resolve.conf. The reason is because in some environments, especially AWS, the DHCP server will hand out the name servers. This is normally fine, but in order to join the domain, the domain DNS server must be the first entry. And the only way to do that is to prepend it in the dhclient.conf file. Unless, of course, your DHCP server is already handing out the correct domain DNS servers. Next, we need to download the open source Power Broker Identity Services package. You can run the same command we're running now to retrieve the latest 64 bit version as of April of 2015, or you can visit beyondtrust.com to look for the package yourself. If you're wondering why we're using Power Broker, which is formerly known as Likewise Open, instead of one of the dozens of other ways of joining AD, it's because out of all of the methods we've tried, it's been the easiest and also the most reliable way of doing it, while remaining open source and free. If you'd like, you can join Ubuntu by hand using the built-in WinBind, but it's easier to let Power Broker do the work for you. Realm D is another option, but at the time of this tutorial, it still had quite a few bugs. Okay, now that the package is downloaded, let's make it executable by running chmod a plus x on the package. Next, let's install the package by running sh followed by the name of the package and install. Now you can finally join the domain. Just run domain join dash cli space join followed by the name of your domain and an Active Directory username and password with permission to join the domain. You should now be able to SSH in by using username at domain name for your credentials. Let's try it now. Okay, well it worked, but we can't sudo obviously, and wouldn't it be nicer if bash came up automatically? So let's just fix that now. Log back in with a user with root privileges and run echo domain admins space all equals all space all to Etsy sudoers. That line just gives any domain admin account sudoers access. You could also add it by using the sudo. Next, let's make it so you can log in by just typing the domain username without needing to specify the domain. Run opt pbis bin config assume default domain true. Lastly, let's make any domain user default to bin bash at login. Run opt pbis bin config login shell template bin bash. Okay, go ahead and try to log in again now with a domain ad admin account. You should be able to sudo. Okay, well done, but let's not stop there. Let's go ahead and set up some home directories. To do so, we're going to need a network share to store them first. While a DFS share is recommended for redundancy, we're going to show you how to quickly get going by creating a shared folder on our domain controller. All that you need to do is create a folder. We'll name ours User Profiles. Now make sure you share the folder, giving authenticated users rights to change, 
and read. Lastly, we need to go to the Advanced Permissions settings. For authenticated users, ensure they have Traverse Folder, List Folder, Read Attributes, Create Folders, and Read Permissions enabled. Also add Creator Owner with full control to our folder. What these settings will do is to make it so that any domain user can create a new folder within User Profiles, which we'll do automatically in a few minutes and have full access to everything with their in their own folder, but no access to anyone else's, unless they're a domain admin, of course. All right, we're ready to go back to our Ubuntu VM. Let's install the CIFS, Utilities, and LibPAM. Run apt get install cifis-utils libpam-mount-y. We're using PAM because it's able to use our login credentials to mount a network share at login and CIFS is the type of share we're connecting to. We need to edit the PAM mount configuration. To do so, you could just edit it with VI directly at Etsy Security PAM mount dot conf dot XML, but we'll make it easier on you. Run the following block of code to fill out the configuration, replacing dco1.devopslibrary.com with the name of your file server, and the mount point will need to be home, local, your domain name. We've pasted the block into this video summary. That way you can copy and paste it instead of typing it out. It's extremely important that you make the configuration identical to this unless you really know what you're doing. The first part of it is just saying what volume to mount, and we tell it to use our domain user credentials to mount it. The sec-krb5i part is essential for mounting Windows shares correctly, and the mk mount point line automatically unmounts the share when you log off. All right, now we're almost finished. If you were to log in right now, as long as a folder matching your username is present under the user profile's share, your home directory will mount successfully. However, we don't want to have to set up each other's folder, so we'll use a tool that's part of PAM to do it. Let's edit. Etsy, PAM.D, Common Session. At the very end of this file, add the following line session required pam underscore mk home dir dot so space scale equals etsy scale umask equals 0022 what this line does is it makes it so that the pam underscore mk home dir script will automatically create a home directory for each user under user profile if it doesn't already exist you might be wondering what etsy scale is for well, Etsy scale is known as a skeleton directory. If you're from the Windows world, it's very similar to the default user concept. Anything that you add to that directory will be added by default to anyone's home folder the first time they log in. If you're interested in seeing the skeleton folder in action, just run the following two lines. This will copy the root bash rc file as the default profile file for new users. And as an added bonus, we've enabled colored prompts because everything looks better in color. Well, it's finally time to see if our hard work has paid off. Go ahead and log off and back on using a domain account that's never logged into our Linux VM before. You should see it automatically create a new folder in our file share for the user, and look, our prompt has color. Any file we add now to our home directory will be immediately available to any other Linux VMs that we tie into AD. If we try to access the files of another user, you'll see that we can't, unless we're a domain admin. If you'd like to lock your Linux machines down further, you can always run opt pbis bin config require membership of, followed by the group and usernames that you want to have access to SSH in. Everyone else will be blocked. Well, hopefully everything worked out great, and if you ran into any problems, be sure to tail var log auth dot log. It helps a lot with troubleshooting, and feel free to leave us a message in the comments. Thanks again so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.